So in all this week, we've looked at four methods for solving quadratic equations. We started by reviewing factoring. You've been practicing that for a couple of weeks now. I hope you're feeling pretty comfortable with it. And then we looked at the square root method, completing the square and the quadratic formula. I have four questions here, and I would like you to solve them by using a different method for each question. I would say when you look at this, you should be able to tell before you get started at least which methods some of them will work better with. Take a moment and try to decide. I hope you see that number one should be the square root method. I hope you notice that question three cannot be factored. So you're not going to use factoring for that one. That means that you'll have to choose factoring for either question two or question four. Pause your video and take some time to work on all of these. So we said for question one, we would use the square root method. You know, of course, you can simplify the square root of 32. And I'm going to add five to both sides. Now we just need to divide both sides by two and we've solved this equation. Two answers that can be separated by a comma or written as one expression, plus or minus. Question two looks like we should be able to factor that one. Remember when you're factoring, the first thing you want is for that equation to equal zero. I'll go through the whole factoring method here that you've probably been practicing. We want two numbers that multiply to equal a times c or negative three and that add to equal two. We know that one times three will give us three. One of them has to be negative. One has to be negative. So we're gonna split the middle term using those numbers. We see that 3x minus 1 is common, leaving a factor of x plus 1. We use the zero factor theorem. Each factor has to equal 0. And we have two values for x, 1 over 3 and negative 1. So I have two methods left, the quadratic formula and completing the square. It doesn't matter which one I use for question three or question four. It just depends what you prefer, how you prefer to work with it. So I think I will use 
uh, the quadratic formula for question three and completing the square for question four. Oops, what's going on here? There we go. What did I say? X squared minus six X minus three equals zero. I said I would use the quadratic formula here. Sure. A equals one. B equals negative six, C equals negative three. Write down the formula to make sure you have it memorized. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A. Now we can fill in our numbers. The opposite of B plus or minus the square root of b squared, make sure you have it in brackets, minus four times a times c, all over two times a. Six plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 12, all over two, We can simplify the square root of 48. We see again that two is common in the numerator. Oops, I forgot my two. So our final answer here is three plus or minus two root three. The last method to use then is completing the square. And I saved a good question for that. Remember, we want to leave x squared negative. We want our equation to equal zero. If you haven't already solved this, please do so now. We have to create our perfect square trinomial. Two times negative two gives us negative four. Negative two squared completes the perfect square trinomial. We have to balance the equation. So we have four times negative three. Negative 12 plus 12 balances our equation. We need to factor and simplify. And now we're just going to use the square root method to finish solving the equation. We have two equations. Rationalize the denominator. Add two to both sides. And write over a common denominator. Because the denominator is three, we're going to multiply two by three over three. Six plus or minus the root of 39 all over three. B 
be prepared to show whichever of those methods we ask on your final exam when you're verifying with me.